Intro to Sequences in Calculus. The definition of a sequence is a set of numbers or terms like 1, 2, and 3. The first term is called A1, the second term is called A2, and the third term is called A3. This is known as a sequence. Now, this whole sequence is known as AN. So if you want to refer to the whole sequence, you call it AN. There are three ways a sequence can be given. Explicit. Recursively. And first few terms. In explicit, the rule to calculate the term or nth term is given. For example, a n equals 3 n over n plus 2. This is the rule for the entire sequence. In recursively, the first term is given and a rule for the rest of the terms are given. For example, you could say that a1 equals 5. And then the, the rule for the rest of the terms is a n equals 3 a sub n minus 1 over a sub n minus 1 plus 2. So then to calculate a sub 2, you would just um, plug in um, the uh, 2 for n and then it would refer back to a 1, which is 5 and you could calculate and so on. For these two, you would plug in the number of the sequence term you want, just like how I explained. And the value of that term will show up. Okay, so, and then, for this last one, which is first few terms, you are given the first few terms of the sequence, and then you have to calculate the rule by yourself. For example, if I give 1, 3 over 2, 9 over 5, and 2. What is the rule for this sequence? The rule for these terms, if you didn't recognize, is the example from our explicit sequence, which was a a n equals 3 n over n plus 2. So you plug in 1 for the first term, you get 3 over 3, which is 1. For the second term, you plug in 2, which is 6 over 4, and that becomes 3 over 2, and so on. So these, this kind of sequence is m much more difficult to find than the other two. Let me give you a harder example. So, <clears throat> if you are given this sequence, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So you can, first off, you can see that the first four terms are going to be repeated again. But then that still doesn't solve what is the rule for this sequence. Take a moment to find out. The rule is sine n pi over 2. So, this works because sine 90 is 1, right? So if you plug in 1 for n, you get sine pi over 2, which is the same thing as sine 90. So then that will be 1. If you go to sine 180, that's 0. Sine 270 is negative 1, and sine 360 is 0, and so on. There are a few ways to describe a sequence, monotonic, bounded, and convergent.
Let's talk about monotonic first. <clears throat> As monotonic sequence, its terms are either non-increasing or non-decreasing. For example, if you're given this graph, this is monotonic because every single term is increasing. It's non-decreasing because none of the terms are lower than the previous ones. It's non-decreasing. A non-increasing one would be this kind of graph, for example. But then, if you're given this graph, which is a sine graph, this is mon not monotonic because it is increasing and decreasing. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. So this is not monotonic. The rule for non-increasing is A1 is greater than or equal to A2, who, which is greater than or equal to A3, and so on. And then for non-decreasing, it's the sign is just switched. The sign is important, or the, the greater than or equal to is important, because that means a straight line can also be monotonic, because according to the definition, it is non-increasing and it is non-decreasing. So it is considered monotonic. A sequence can also be described as being bounded or unbounded. If a sequence is bounded from above, there is a number m that is greater than every term in the sequence. This is from above. If it is bounded from below, there's a number n that is smaller than the entire sequence. So n is less than or equal to a n. What are some examples? Here are a few examples. So, these are a few examples. Let's try to find out if these are bounded or not. So, for number one, it is bounded at the bottom because there's nothing, there's nothing less than this value right here. It is also bounded at the top because, as you can see by this um, dotted line, that it does, not, it does not reach greater than this line. So, it is also bounded up here. So, if something is both bounded from below and above, it is just called bounded, right? So this one is bounded. So two, we can see that it is bounded from above because that's the highest point. This is the highest point right here. But we cannot say that it is bounded from below because we can reasonably assume that it is this sequence is going to continue to decrease. We can say that it's going to keep going, keep going. So we cannot say it's bounded from below. So we'll just say it's bounded from above or BA. For number three, 
we can say that it is bound from below because it's, this is obviously the lowest point but we can see that it's going to keep increasing so we cannot say it's bound from above so this is bounded from below for this one for number four we can't say it's either because we can see that it's both increasing above and below so this is neither finally we have number five now this one is bounded from both above and below because this is the highest point and this is the lowest point so it is both so it is just called bounded if a sequence is bounded and monotonic it is convergent so remember bounded means that it is both bounded from above and below and monotonic means that it is non-decreasing so it may be increasing or decreasing or a straight line okay so pause the video and try to find the convergence of the previous examples okay hopefully you guys could have easily found the convergence of each of these so for example this one is number one is monotonic and it's bounded because it has a bound from on below and above so this is convergent we can say it's convergent number two it is bounded from above but it is not bounded from below so right now we can toss out its convergence it is not convergent not convergent number three it's bounded from below it's also monotonic it's it's constantly increasing but because it's not bounded from above we can't say it is bounded so it is not convergent number four is none of them so it's not monotonic or bounded so it is not convergent finally we come to number five now this is both bounded but it's not monotonic but it is still called considered convergent why okay let's come to the answer Sorry for the little things. Alright, so in the first place, why is such a sequence called convergent? Because it approaches a limiting value. So, even though number 5 is not monotonic, it is bounded though, but it's not monotonic, it's convergent because you can see that it's approaching 0. It's convergent now this sounds similar to something we did in the beginning of the year do you guys remember what that is limits thank you guys for listening i hope you benefited